In this video, we're going to be adding the all new NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5090 to a couple handhelds to see what kind of performance we can get. I'm going to be testing over USB 4 using the Zotac Zone, and we're also going to test on the new iNeo 3 over an Oculink connection. Of course, not a lot of people out there are going to be buying a 5090 for their handheld, but I still wanted to see if we could game at 4K on these devices over USB 4 and Oculink. So I've got a little bit to test. I've got a couple docs that we're also going to be using, but before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $22.88. They're going to email you that key and then you can activate windows speaking of that let's head over to a new pc that i recently built as you can see we're running windows 11 and from settings we're going to go to activation settings it's going to tell us that we're not active we don't have a key installed so we're just going to paste it right in here choose next it's going to activate windows for us and we're ready to go if you're in need of cheap windows keys i'll leave a link in the description and remember you can use code eta for 25 percent off the first handheld gaming PC that we're going to be testing with is the Zotac Zone, and I kind of found this fitting because the card we're going to be using is the Zotac Gaming GeForce RTX 5090 Amp Extreme Infinity Edition. This thing is a beast, and again, yeah, not a lot of people are going to pick these up specifically for a handheld, but since I've got this review unit in my possession right now, I figured I'd go ahead and make a video. And as for the dock I'm using, this is the AUSTAR A02. I've upgraded the 350 watt power supply to a 650 watt power supply, and I do think it's going to be enough for the 5090 over USB 4, because we're not going to be pulling as much as we would if this was connected over a PCIe X16 slot. When it comes down to it, USB 4 can run at a maximum of 40 gigs, so we are really cutting down the bandwidth on this 5090, but I do think we might see some decent performance out of it. I just connected my game capture to move in a bit closer so we could see everything. And obviously, we've got the Zotac Zone right now. We've got that 8840U, and this will do up to a 30 watt TDP. I'm actually just going to max it out there. 16 gigs of DDR5 at 7500. We've still got access to the built in Radeon 780MI GPU, but instead of using that, we've got that RTX 5090 connected. And remember, this is connected over USB 4, so we're not getting the maximum bandwidth. And one thing I usually test with just to make sure we are getting a maximum connection or as fast as we can with USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 is an application known as CUDA-Z. Unfortunately, it's not working with 5090. I also tested this on the ROG Ally X just to make sure it wasn't this device. I cannot bring it up in CUDA-Z, so I'm not exactly sure how fast our transfer speeds are over USB 4 with this dock and the 5090. But I do know we're running this at PCIe X4 3.0. So it's far from that X16 5.0 that this card is really meant to run over. But again, we're running over USB 4 here. And the first thing I did was run a quick 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark. We got a total score on this device, 17,817. And our graphics score is 22,350. And just to give you an idea of the performance loss, at least with this synthetic benchmark here, I also ran it in my desktop with an i7-14700K. Graphics score over there is 45,067. So yeah, we're losing quite a bit over USB 4 with this card so far. But now it's time to test out a few games, and the first one we have here is Cyberpunk 2077. 4K, Ultra, no DLSS, no frame gen. I've got Afterburner running in the top left-hand corner, and you can see that we're not quite hitting a steady 60 FPS with this, and I didn't think we would, given that we're running over a USB 4 connection. It's really cut down, but there's still a few more settings that I wanted to test here, like ray tracing overdrive. And we're just going to enable it, but we're not going to enable frame generation. It's going to take DLSS to that auto preset. And just judging by the performance we saw at Ultra with no ray tracing, I don't think it's going to fare very well here over USB 4. Of course, NVIDIA is really touting their multi-frame generation, which does work out really well on the 5090. Not sure how well it's going to work out here, but we will test it in just a second. But you can see now with that ray tracing overdrive preset at 4K on this device over USB 4, we're in the mid 40s. And if you take a look at our TGP up there in the top left hand corner, we're getting up to around 300 watts. 
If this was running in my desktop, this thing pulls around 450 watts with these same exact settings here. So we just can't utilize the full potential of this GPU over USB 4, and I knew we weren't gonna be able to. But with frame generation enabled, it really does take it up. I'm set to X4, so we are using the DLSS multi-frame generation here on the 5090 with the Zotac zone. Still using that ray tracing overdrive preset with DLSS set to auto. And we're seeing frame rates anywhere from 140 up to 170, which is great, but we are generating a ton of frames here. With this next game, I did notice some major dips every once in a while. We're at 4K, very high, no frame generation, and ray tracing is off. It's not horrible, but yeah, I mean, you can definitely tell that it's kind of struggling with that bandwidth over USB 4. And the final game we have here is Black Myth Wukong, 4K Ultra Settings, and it did way better than I thought it was gonna, just judging by the other two games we tested so far. So yeah, there are some games here that are gonna work out pretty well over USB 4, but again, like I mentioned at the beginning, I don't think a lot of people are gonna run out to buy a 5090 to connect it over a USB 4 Thunderbolt 4 connection. The next handheld gaming PC we're going to be testing with is the all-new Ioneo 3. This does have an Oculink port, and Oculink should run much faster than USB 4. USB 4 is around 40 gigs, Oculink can do up to 63, and in all actuality, we can actually reach those speeds on most devices that I've tested with. USB 4 usually maxes out around 32 gigs. And for this, I went with a different dock altogether. This is the Menace Forum DG01. I've added an 850 watt power supply here. We've got that 12 volt high voltage connection right over to the uh, RTX 5090. And you can see this only supports Oculink, so I couldn't even use this over USB 4 anyway. Unfortunately, Oculink really isn't hot swappable. I mean, we still get the connection like this, but I'm going to have to reboot the whole system and get all of the drivers installed on the Ioneo 3. But yeah, with that 850 watt power supply, if we can pull more than we did over USB 4, we should have plenty of power for the 5090. With the Ioneo 3, we do have a more powerful CPU coming in with that HX370, plus we've got the 5090 connected over an Oculink connection. I do expect to see better performance out of this unit here. Not exactly sure how much more we're going to get out of it, but another thing I wanted to show you was if we go to GPU-Z, you can see that the GPU is now running over a PCIe X4 4.0 connection instead of a 3.0 connection like we had on the Zotac Zone using only USB 4. Just like the Zone, I did run 3D Mark Time Spy, and with this unit, we got a total score of 20,000. Our graphics score, 25,962. Still a lot lower than I thought it would be given that we're over Oculink. Remember, on the Zone, we had a graphic score of 22,350. I just really thought we'd see a much higher score here. I mean, we are getting a little more out of it over Oculink, and this could be due to newer drivers with the 5090. Get back into Cyberpunk. And I just went right in here at 4K, Ray Tracing Overdrive, DLSS Auto, 4K Frame Gen. If you remember, over USB 4 on the Zotac Zone, we were seeing frame rates anywhere from 140 up to 170. Now we're seeing frame rates anywhere from 140 up to 200. And even just going back down to a native 4K Ultra setting with no ray tracing, we're seeing around the same kind of frame rate that we did on the Zotac Zone over USB 4. We just can't quite break 60 with it. Not exactly sure what's going on, but yeah, there's really no way for me to test the transfer speed right now. I've checked all of the applications that I know of, so we're probably going to have to come back and retest once we get a newer driver from NVIDIA. Next game we have is Doom Eternal, and I wanted to test one because it is a very well-optimized game. We're totally maxed out at 4K right now, and I do have ray tracing on. We're getting over 300 FPS on average. This is really great, but it's an older game. And I did go back over Oculink with the same games we tested over USB 4. I'm only seeing anywhere from a 10 to a 25 FPS increase using those same settings. So something is definitely going on here. 
but I've got one more that I wanted to test here. Spider-Man 2, 4K, very high. No ray tracing, no DLSS, no frame generation. Getting an average of around 76 FPS, but there are areas where it dips down below 60. So obviously the RTX 5090 does work with these handhelds over USB 4 or Oculink, but I do think that something's going on with these newer drivers. One thing I really need to do is just grab another device, connect it, and see if we're seeing that same kind of performance with the same chipset and everything like that. But I might wait a little while for a newer driver update or even test with a different dock. So if you're interested in seeing a follow-up video, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.